Hello, and thank you for watching So You Think You're Awake, the show about life transformation through dream interpretation. This show is a little bit different than my other shows. I always include dreams in the other ones. This one is just purely about uh, an interview I did with a guest for my radio show. And we did it with video with the purpose of putting it here on this channel. Um, Susan specializes in clearing spaces, getting rid of uh, spirits and things that shouldn't be in your own energy space, in your own living room or in the place where you work. And I thought it was a perfect thing to uh, introduce for Halloween. Um, of course, it's useful all the time. People who work in the spiritual field, uh, quite often, uh, if you're a channel, you have to check the space you're in, make sure everything's working well, that your uh, connection isn't being interfered with and so on. And so it comes up from time to time in people's dreams where they're told, hey, look, you need to clear your own personal space or you need to do something. So it is related to dreams in that way, but yet it's standalone. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the interview. Susan, I want to welcome you welcome you back onto the show. And that's a, a rare thing for me to be able to say. I have not done many interviews on this show, but I have had you on in the past, a few years ago. Uh, you talked about sound healing and gave demonstrations about that. So welcome back. It was a great pleasure. And I spent, since we were in an audio situation, it seemed like such a natural thing. If people like radio, they're into sound. And sound healing then is simply a way to use frequencies and the broad spectrum frequencies and the very focused frequencies of tuning forks for healing and growth and, and spiritual development. So it was fun to play with you with that. And it was a delight to be on the show. And I'm really delighted to be asked back to talk about something completely different. Yeah, and it, your sound healing work plays into this, and that'll make sense towards the end of this interview. So this is going to be pretty short, but I attended a workshop uh, of yours just recently, a three-hour workshop, and I knew, obviously knew you did the sound healing, but you apparently also do energy and uh, space clearings, and I did not know that. And I've worked in this field for 27 years, and I know there are not many people that do clearings, at least not in the way that that you do it. So um, I thought, this is fascinating. I've got to go to your workshop because uh, we're already connected. And it blew me away. It really blew me away. And I was so happy with that. And so I, I asked you on because I wanted to, you to share some of the insights that you've had uh, in, working in this field. Um, I mean, let's start easy. You have this amazing analogy, which I think explains in a fantastic way why you would even want to think about space clearing. Okay, yes, that was, it was a way that just made perfect sense to me. It was one of those downloads where I just got this image and I spoke the words and the scene came clear to people and made sense. So when we're talking about why we need to clear a space, we recognize that we are multidimensional beings and that we occupy the physical world and the non-physical world. The world of energy is an invisible world that's much, much larger and far more complex than we've generally been aware of, but we're getting more aware. And to venture into that world of the invisible without any preparation, without any awareness, would be like saying, I would like to, I've been invited to go for a walk in the woods. I've been invited to go on a hike, maybe even say up Mount Rainier. It's new territory and um, I know there's stuff there, but I'm just gonna go. And I won't even think about whether I need hiking boots. I won't think about if it's a hot day or a cold day. If when we're walking into the spirit world and we don't choose to be aware of what else shares the space with us, then it is like taking a walk in the woods or a hike without taking any equipment that would keep you safe. To take a walk up Mount Rainier without hiking boots, without proper clothing, without food and water, without um, awareness that there are predators and large animals there who have every right to be there. And you wanna make sure you're sharing the space wisely and staying safe and everybody just, you know, just has a good experience. That's how I liken what it's like to live in the world of energy and yet not choose awareness of what else shares the space and what equipment might make it a safe and comfortable journey for you to move through 
all the types of spiritual realms that we choose to move through. If, when we meditate, when we walk into a new space, there's energy operating. There's energy operating between the two of us right now. And between and us and all those who will listen, there's this energy operating. Yeah. If we're not aware, it doesn't work for us. I love how you, you say that there are predators in these places. And then you add, who have every right to be there. And that to me was definitely, oh, okay, I get it. You know, it, it's their world. And it's like, there are predators all around us uh, here where we live in, in Seattle and the surrounding areas. There are bears, there are uh, mountain lions, there, you know, and it doesn't stop us doing anything. We just need to be aware of them and take the necessary precautions. And then we're gonna be safe. And it's the exact same in the spirit world. So I absolutely love that analogy. And you could do a course just on that analogy because then you could describe some of the things that are there, but that's not what we're going to do here. Um, you uh, also say, okay, well, why would we clear a space? If I want to channel, for instance, if I want to venture into the spirit world and try to connect with my guides, obviously having a clear space is a much better location to do that in. Um, you, you said at one point in the workshop, your flow will be much better when the, the space is cleared or something along those lines. Do you remember what it was? Probably not exactly because I download and channel as I'm teaching. So the exact words may not be, but that's the idea that if you are in clear, safe, protected psychic space, your channel of communication is both safe and fully open and you get clearer, more understandable, more relevant messages you just get it's as if you tuned your radio to a very clear channel and there's no static there's no interference and securing the space creates that sense of very clear open broadband communication with the ones you want to communicate with because there are many things out there who would love to poke in <laughs> and interrupt or disrupt or crackle, put some crackle and static in, and we just have to acknowledge, yeah, you're there, but um, this, is, this is clean, safe space, and there's no entry. So um, I have come across, in the work I do, I've come across people a few times that need a clearing. They need uh, even their own personal space cleared because they have issues. Um, and it's not common. I have to hasten to say it's not common. I think it's, it's more common to have an energy, a space that isn't clear of everything, and you wouldn't necessarily be aware of it. And you covered that also in your workshop. Uh, do you mind sharing some of the ways that you, that are indicators that the space you're working in may not be clear? That's a great question. And it helps bring this down to the very practical level of how do we perceive energy? The room looks clean physically, there's the, it's brightly lit. Everything looks okay to our physical eyes. And we have to remember that the invisible world is much bigger. Our physical senses are very limited, but we have these other senses that tell us when something's a little off energetically. So let me just mention some of the ways that, that your body and your own energy system alert you that the space isn't clean and the energy is not harmonious with you. It's not compatible. It's causing ill effects. So some of the ill effects are very physical. You might get a sudden upsurge of aches and pains that don't connect to anything physical that you recognize. You might suddenly feel very tired or drained. And that's a clear indicator that this is energy. This is not your physical situation. This is energy interacting. You might even get itchy or feel dizzy or a slightly nauseated. Those are very clear indicators that there's something incompatible with you in the space. Other things are more on the mental emotional level. You might feel a sudden surge of anxiety or sadness or anger, irritability. These upsurges of unexplained emotion are reactions to incompatible energy. Longer term, you might get sleep disturbances. If you are in a space more, more, frequently or more continuously where the energy is not compatible. You could get sleep disturbances, nightmares, um, actual personality changes or longer term mood swings that again, no physical situation will account for it. It's not your diet, it's not your life practices, it's not even the other person in the room, there's something else there and your system is reacting in this discomforting way. 
anxiety, depression, fear, you know, just unexplained fear for no reason. There is a reason. You just, your logical mind just doesn't know what it is. But there's a reason for those feelings of low grade discomfort or anxiety. And it's the energy. And, and so you clear these spaces, you go into these spaces. Now you have this special ability and you're able to see psychically what's in the space and what needs to be cleared. Um, you've been doing it for eight years or, or, or more. I mean, that's quite a, a considerable amount of time to, uh, to build up a ton of experience. Um, is there, you, you don't need to go to a location to, to fix it, I, I imagine, because it's not in the physical realm that you're doing the fixing. Exactly. It's, when I clear homes, it's almost always a remote clearing where I'm tuning in to the energy in that non-physical space, detecting what's there. And I have a clearing, uh, like almost a clearing army. These are very non-physical beings who are experts at detecting and releasing unwanted okay. discordant energy. So there's that. And I also have other practices and methods that are accessible to anyone. You don't have to be a trained energy clearer to maintain your own space at a, at a basic level of safety, just like you don't have to be a doctor to take care of your basic physical health. Yeah, and that's what I like. You have uh, five methods of protection. Um, do you want to, would you explain just briefly what they are? And um, also I wanna say, uh, you, have, you do workshop shops on this. So you, you clear people's spaces, that's one of the things you do. Uh, and if, I presume if you do, then the, these symptoms that you talked about before, like restlessness, uh, feeling itchy or irritable or whatever it is, whatever is the trigger for you, for your system to say there's something not right in this space. Um, those symptoms should disappear once the space is clear. Very often it's instantaneous. This is subtle energy, so it moves very quickly and the body responds very quickly. Some things take a little longer to process, but generally people feel relief of a discernible type immediately, and then it just continues to feel better and better as the body ad adapts to say, oh, all right, that's, that's, that's in tune with me. I am in harmony with the space now. So right, there's immediate relief and then longer lasting relief. And the methods are both. Yeah, would you explain what the five of those are? With the massive uh, caveat that there is a lot of skill in using these things, um, but but anybody can use them. But to use them effectively uh, and to their be optimum way um, requires extra knowledge. But so for yes. the in the layperson terms, could you run through them? Right. The the going from the most physical type of protection and moving on to the most spiritual in the terms of it's not very physically oriented. What most everyone knows about. Again, sage and smudging is, is a time-honored method. And my work is not about that because for two reasons. A, everybody, many, many people are aware. It's been taught beautifully elsewhere. Two, it doesn't work on everything. And it's for people who realize this isn't helping their situation. They come to me and I explain these other options. So the first and most physical is crystals. There are crystals whose vibrational energy is specifically calibrated to clear and harmonize a space. I have particular grids and combinations of crystals that are very effective for even the most um, disturbing energy and compatibilities. And that's what I explain in the workshop too, is how, what kinds of crystals work well together. Crystals are very good for long lasting relief, but they are not fast acting. The second thing that I really talk about is essential oils and herbs. They can be used together separately with the stones. That's, that's the beginning of layering. Essential oils are good for more rapid relief when they're diffused. And again, there is a set of 18 oils that I'm aware of that are specifically very effective for clearing all kinds of psychic energy, whether it's emotions, thought forms, entities, or other disturbing energy. I have to interject here. I know you're in, you're in your flow. I apologize. Uh, I had a person who had, was being bothered by an entity and in their dream, their guides were telling him that they were using oils to keep him safe. 
are oil. They just said oil. And I thought that was crazy. And then I did your workshop. And afterwards, I was thinking, oh, my God, that's one of the protective mechanisms. And I never knew that. But there it was in a dream. Anyway, uh, please it's continue. A, it's a specialized form of plant medicine. And because essential oils are so concentrated, they are the heavy hitters of the herbal world. They are very potent, very potent. And there's some caveats for using them so that you don't OD or you cause some respiratory issues for animals or children or others in the space. So even that, you want to be wise and discerning and get some guidance on it. The third option is sound. Uh, while that can seem very non-physical, sound is a physical force. You've heard thumping bass and you feel it in your body. So those sound waves have physical and metaphysical effects. So healing sound which can be a particular frequency like a tuning fork or a broad range of frequencies like a bowl or other actual music that is calibrated. And again, I have some guidelines for what kind of music or tones or frequencies are most effective at creating clear space. Sound can be rapid relief. It has a time, it like, like anything, it'll dissipate and you'll need to renew that but it can clear a space instantly. And when I'm dealing with haunted houses or entity possessions or some strain, you know, some of that super, super Hollywood disturbing stuff. stuff, it works instantly. Most things respond to sound. The fourth one would be moving into the category of light and vision, and that's sacred symbols or images. And they are sigils, which are a particular form of sacred sign. So you can draw these symbols just with your fingers in the air. You can inscribe them on surfaces. You can wear them or carry them. These can be both rapid and long lasting depending on how you choose to use them. Again, not everything responds to that approach. The final practice is a spiritual protocol. And that's where you are simply operating in a meditative way and you're activating things through your force of will and through your directed spiritual energy. It mechanism or protocols like the violet flame, that's very well known, but it can be used in ways that most people don't know. And it can be upgraded to fit some of the newer situations that we're encountering lately. So those are the five general categories. Each one of them has tremendous potency. And what I want to add is there is a secret sauce that is what makes them all work right for you, calibrates them to you, and makes them especially effective in your unique and personal situation. So that secret sauce is a tune core in next sauce. week and we'll tell you, is it? <laughs> yes, it's like tune in, tune in to find out. So I will say it has to do with a concept that's very ancient and yet also very modern. It's the concept of sovereignty. And that is something that humans need to reclaim is their sense of sovereignty because sovereignty creates right relationship, which is the whole basis of clearing energy and creating harmonies. We are building right relationship, which starts from inner right awareness of ourselves as sovereign, acknowledgement of all other beings as sovereigns also, and then creating harmonious interactions rather than clashing ones through clearing energy and establishing sovereign sacred space. So that's the core is about sovereignty. And every one of these tools that I mentioned is both an extension and a direction of your sovereignty in these particular ways that work on the physical and non-physical levels. But again, there's, there's much to be guided on so that you are choosing wisely what's gonna work for you, what you're encountering recognizing your own body signals, recognizing what's comfortable for you and what's tedious. I'll just say this. If it's tedious, it's not right for you. Don't go there. You know? <laughs> That's why there's more than one method. It's like ways of getting vitamin C. I don't like oranges, so I don't eat oranges, but I like cabbage and potatoes. And so that's the same thing. There's this sense of divine redundancy where there's multiple ways to achieve the effect and you get to choose the, the blend or combination that's effective for both you and the situation. So for, for people who are watching this on YouTube, we're adding uh, just an extra little bit of time. 
to ask you, Susan, what would you add to um, what we've already covered? I know we're just slicing right through your work and, and that's a shame, but uh, allowing us to do that, what, what do you think is also really important to say? What I'd like to really mention is that humans have become so disconnected from the idea of our place in both the natural order and the spiritual realms, the ecosystem, that we have a beautiful and vital role to play in the spiritual ecosystem in cooperation with many kinds of beings. They share the space, just as if you take a walk in the woods, you might see a deer, a squirrel, a fox, possibly a bear. They all belong there. And when you are a respectful traveler, you can belong there too. And there's harmony with you and these other beings. When, over the course of a lot of religious and belief system evolution, we were pulled out of that awareness. And so we've lost touch with the vitality and the richness of our spiritual ecosystem. We're beginning to come to awareness and appreciation of the validity of diversity in the physical ecosystem, we want to take that and extend that the way shamans and indigenous people knew to do, to honor the richness and vitality of the spiritual ecosystem and to share it, to share those spaces with the other beings who belong there. So, so that's you, where you get to understand who else is in this space with us and how, where are we like creating friction and, and, possibly even anger. And then these beings are lashing out at us just the way of an angered fox or a wounded raccoon would. If we, if we damage their habitat, they're going to be responding and reacting. And, and to just say pragmatically, oh, I see we're clashing here. How can we put this right? And that's part of my work of clearing is to recognize where things have gone wrong and the humans are not being um, malicious. They simply don't know. They don't realize they're causing harm or damage and this these energetic reactions there's sometimes other things poking at us saying stop that you're bothering me and we're saying and we're just getting like instead of saying <laughs> oh there's two sides to this story and how can we recognize and honor what's going on for the other beings i have a number of stories to share about where that's actually been the case in a very disturbing clearing situation when I step in as someone who is respectful and wants to understand everything and act as both advocate and witness for the spiritual beings who don't have physical voices, everyone's perspective shifts. And the ultimate result is harmony, which is both a Druidic, a Celtic, an indigenous people's understanding of how we're meant to be here in harmony with a diversity of life that we're not above it, we're not superior, we're not in charge even, we're just part of it. And what is our part? It's helping to maintain that energetic harmony. So it is for all of us to do to some degree. And those of us who are called in a particular way, it's ours to do to a more advanced or extended degree. So not everyone's called to clear energy like as a livelihood, as a vocation, as a spiritual calling. But we are all responsible for a certain level of harmony and order in our own personal worlds and realms. Our home, our household, our bodies, our personal energy space, we are responsible and fully capable of maintaining that with a sense of harmony and benevolence. So that's the other that's the other aspect that I would bring is, is um, as I mentioned in the workshop, and this blows a lot of people away when I say good and evil aren't color coded. It's not about light or dark entities or energies. It's about harmful and helpful, compatible and incompatible, benevolent and malevolent, though it's the intention that determines whether the energy hits you in a way that harms you or a way that blesses you intention is the power the willpower that creates how the energy acts and moves so what i am watching for and what i would invite everyone to switch shift their consciousness and their awareness is to step out of it's a light being it's a dark being there are very dark benevolent beings who 
are here to help. There are very light beings who are completely hostile to us. We recognize that light can kill. A laser can heal you. A laser can kill you. It's all about the intent with which it is directed. The same with both of these kinds of energy, dark and light. It I love that again. On your workshop, I love that. I don't want to interrupt you. I never want to interrupt you. It's, I could just listen to you talk because it's all so educational. Um, but you were saying it's like the earth has, has daytime with the light and nighttime with the dark. And one isn't bad and the other is good. But yet we, we have this crazy sense that everything in the light is good and everything in the dark is bad. And that's not true because we recharge our batteries in the dark. There are lots of very positive things that happen in the dark. So it's like, okay, that was an eye opener to me. And uh, that was just one of many eye openers. So I could not endorse your course more than, uh, it's the most interesting thing I've done in a very, very long time. And I really hope people uh, do follow you. And I hope you write a book <laughs> because uh, you have such a wealth of knowledge. Even when people went off script, let's say that the course was about learning about clearing spaces. When people who attended the workshop asked questions that were very, very esoteric. You were aware of that side of things and you were able to talk to them using their terminology. And that's, um, that's a sign of a master. Susan, I want to thank you for sharing this information. It's absolutely amazing. And this is really just the tip of the iceberg I know from doing your workshop and talking to you uh, afterwards. Um, but people who want to get in touch with you to do one of your workshops, which are available online and in person, uh, they can contact you uh, through at susan at graceflow.me. And uh, right. you have a website as well? I do. Graceflow.me is my website. And again, if you, have, if you come to me and you email or contact me and say, I heard you on Michael Sheridan's show, I will have a special introductory offer for you because I'm delighted to meet new people and share this information. That's fantastic. And I have to say, there's one of the things, I mean, there's so many is interesting things we're, we're not covering. Uh, for instance, you talked about there are benevolent uh, entities, let's say, in the spirit realm who are there to help you uh, keep a space clear and they will work with you as long as you're aware they're there and, and so on. So it's not, it's not all bad. Uh, there are lots and lots of good things in every realm. And exactly. uh, that's all part of the knowledge that you share. So thank you very much for being on the show. And I, I hope uh, we'll have you back on again uh, at some time in the future. Well, thank you, Michael. It's such a pleasure to be with you. And thank you so much for allowing this time and space for this to happen. Thank you.